text here in your reading already. So you've read this story, and it's a, it's a wonderful story about J- uh, Jacob. And I'll read it here this morning and bring you a little thought that, that the Lord's put on my heart. And don't forget now, be back this evening. Be here early. Call a friend. I've, I've had, I actually have preachers from other churches that go to the churches want to know about what time we start starting tonight and coming. I've also had uh, some other people send texts and stuff and say, I'm going to try to get my family members there. So it's, it's a pretty, pretty big deal. What I'm going to do tonight is pretty, pretty important, uh, not because I'm doing it, because it's being done. And um, it's, it's very, very sad that so many churches today have become nothing more than a entertainment or a production on Sunday morning. And um, it, it's not what God called us to do. And I'm, I'm, I'm very burdened about it. I've been pro- planning this for at least two years. And I have put hundreds of hours of video work and stuff. And that stuff, it's harder than you think splicing that stuff together. So um, it, it's, 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 a, it's a very important thing. So be here tonight. Don't miss it. Bring somebody with you, and uh, we'll, we'll see what the Bible has to say about it and what's going on, okay? Genesis chapter 28, and uh, we'll look at verse number one this morning. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said unto them, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Arise, go to Paden Aram, to the house of Bethuel, my, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, my mother's brother. And God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee that thou mayest be a multitude of people. And give thee the blessing of Abraham to thee and to thy seed with thee. Notice the promises are always Abraham, Isaac, through Jacob. Never Esau and never Ishmael. The promises of God's blessing and giving of the land and the, uh, everything is always to Jacob, through the sons of Jacob, the 12 tribes, not Ishmael. That's, the, that's Islam. Uh, look at verse number four. And give the blessing of Abraham to thee and to thy seed with thee, that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger, which God gave unto Abraham. And Isaac sent away Jacob. And he went to Paden Aram unto Laban, the son of Bethuel, the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob, and Esau's mother. And when Esau saw that Jacob, Isaac, had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Paden Aram to take him a wife from thence, and that as he blessed him, he gave him a charge, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. And that Jacob obeyed his father and his mother and was gone to Paden Aram. And Esau, seeing that the daughters of Canaan pleased not, Isaac, his father. Then went Esau unto Ishmael and took unto the wives which he had hath, Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nebroth, to be his wife. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth and on the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord thy God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest, this is to Jacob, to thee will I give it and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. Thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Look back at verse number um, 11 where he got sleepy and he got so tired he took these big rocks, stones, and made him a pillow. Then he had a dream. Uh, no wonder man had a dream to use a big old rock for a pillow. I've had a few of them in motels and places like that. But look what he dreamed, verse 12. 
and he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set on, upon it on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. I'd like to preach this morning on Christ the ladder. Jesus Christ the ladder. The Bible says here in this story that Jacob dreamed. And in this dream, he saw a big ladder. It reached from earth to heaven. God was at the top of it, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. I don't know that it was like this, but I, in my mind, I picture the, it's like an escalator. You've seen the escalator at the mall? you got some people going up, some people going down, some people going up, some people going down, ascending and descending. I imagine it like that. So Jacob lays down like this and he goes to sleep and for some, some reason he has this strange dream. And in this dream he sees God at the, at the top. He sees the earth at the bottom. He sees a ladder that reaches from earth to heaven. He sees angels ascending and descending. Ascending and descending. Now if you know anything about Bible uh, typology or Bible, really much about the Bible at all, you know that the Old Testament is filled literally with types and shadows of New Testament truth and doctrine. As one old preacher wisely said, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. That means there are many things like types and shadows hidden in the Old Testament that people didn't understand until the New Testament came. For example, uh, when they hit the rock over there, bam, when he hit that rock and water come out, the Bible said that rock was Christ. That's a picture of them hitting Jesus on the cross and the water of life comes out and, and we live. All this stuff are types and shadows. Even Adam and Eve, when Eve went to, when he when they, when they put Adam to sleep, picture of the death of Jesus, took out his rib, picture of the, where they stuck Jesus there on the cross, purchased his wife, the church, Eve, the type of Christ, all the way through the Bible. One old preacher said one time, he said you ought to be able to find Jesus on every page in your Old Testament. If you're reading it right, look while you're reading and you'll see Jesus typified. I don't know every page, but many, many, many hundreds of types and shadows in the Bible. Here we have this, and I remember when I first got saved and started studying the Bible, I thought, uh, what in the world does this mean? I remember reading that story, and, and I was just 18 when I first started reading the Bible, and, and I, I thought, well, uh, they said you're supposed to see Jesus, and I thought, well, uh, here's a ladder, a ladder? Um, everybody knows what a ladder is. I started bringing one in here this morning and show y'all, but I, I figured that you'd, uh, everybody in here knows what a ladder is. And I thought, what, what is that? And it said, the angels of God ascending and descending. And then it hit me. I said, ascending, descending, ascending, descending. Where, that, that sounds, for, where, I read that somewhere else. And as always, the King James Bible is interwoven and it clicked. And I said, oh, John chapter one. And I, and I flipped over to John chapter one where Jesus was calling the disciples and he called Nathaniel and them to come out and, and he come out and he said, uh, you're the Messiah. And then the Lord said, I saw you when you were sitting over there under that fig tree. And he said, you did? How'd you know? You saw me when I was in the fig tree before you even met me? He said, that's right. And he said, you're gonna see greater things than this. He said, from hereafter, you're gonna see the angels of God ascending and descending upon the son of man. Talking about himself. And I said, whoa, that was Jesus. That ladder was Jesus. I said, hallelujah. Man, you, you don't know what that does to a young Christian when it first clicks in you like that, how that was written thousands of years before, and yet you see it fulfilled. After all, who is it that makes a way from earth all the way to heaven? Who is it that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life? Nobody comes to God but except by me. Who is it that said, I'm the door? And if any man try to what? Climb up some other way? He's the same as a thief and a robber. So it all then I said, glory to God, hallelujah. That, that ladder is a picture of none other than the Lord Jesus himself. And so uh, this morning we're gonna look at that. How do we get from earth to heaven? How, uh, how do you get from Morgan into heaven? Anybody know? I know. Uh, God made a way from earth 
all the way to heaven. Now, when I use this as an illustration, I'm not implying that you climb up Jesus, that you take a step, another step. I'm not implying that at all. Uh, and he's like a spiritual escalator, brother. Once you get on him, he'll take you the rest of the way. But it is a type and a picture of how we trust the Lord. Three things right quick about it, and then we'll go. Number one, uh, Jesus Christ is a safe ladder. Jesus Christ is a safe ladder. He's the only means of escape from the wrath of God to come, from the grasp of Satan, from the dominion of sin and the whirlpool of iniquity that this world, he's a safe ladder. Now, anybody in here that's ever done any kind of work, if you've painted, if you've done any kind of construction, any kind of building, you've all been on ladders. I have, I've always loved to climb ladders. I love to climb on top of stuff. I have since I was a little kid. I still do. I love heights. I do. I like to climb up on top of the building and just look off. I like to climb trees. I like to climb. I, I enjoy just, just climbing up some. We have some old ladders here. I, I think one of y'all finally threw that old ladder away, and I like that ladder. Uh, it was, uh, who, who did? It disappeared. I bet Eric did. Uh, but anyway, we had one here, and it was a metal ladder, and we was doing all this painting and everything. Thing, and we'd lay that thing up against this wall right here. Lord, that thing was about 50 years old and it was bent and everything. And, and you had to, have you ever had a ladder where you had to step on one side of the, of the, of the, of the step or, or it's going down? I've had, a, you know, I, I remember one time uh, I was at home and I cleaned, I was uh, cleaning out my gutters and I got an extension ladder. It ain't much neither really. Most people wouldn't even get on it, but I'm, I'm so little, I guess it, it's got them little round, round, uh, Steps. It ain't even got the flat one. Uh, some of them around, the only thing you're supposed to get on them. But I extend it up, and the top the side of my house is is uh, higher than this, higher than this, uh, 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 or the two-story part is. And uh, I'd, I'd get up there, and every year, every year, they'd say, uh, the girls say, Daddy, you better be careful getting up there. I hired one boy, paid one boy, used to come here to church. I said, I'll pay you so much money. I'm busy if you'll get up there and get them together. He's about 17 or 18, and he got up there and he said, I, I can't do this. Because you're like this, your ladder's here, and the overhang's like this, so you have to do like this and reach over like that and pull, pull the leaves out. And so actually you're leaning backwards and it's way down there and you do like that and reach down in the gutter and, and get them one handful at a time. And uh, it's too steep to get up there, so you have to do it down this way. Well, I do that every year and, and they told me, said, you gonna fall off there one of these days? I ain't gonna fall. I ain't gonna fall. I, I, I can hold on with one hand like that and I climb and I've always liked to do that. I know it's crazy, but I, I'm telling you, if I, I see a ladder, I won't climb it. And uh, I, was, I was up on the side of the house one day and we got that uh, swimming pool in the backyard and I got a fence around the pool and it's a wood fence about that tall with, with, um, with a lattice in there, you know, two befores and sharp pointed things ever so often like that. Well, I was around there and I was up there just cleaning out them gutters and all of a sudden, I was way up there. My feet was uh, almost as tall as that out there right there. All of a sudden, that thing went out from under me. And I felt it. I, I felt it go, and I just, oh, you don't even have time to pray. You don't have, and I went, bam, and come down, it come down the side of the house like that. And I'm telling you, by the grace of God, my grill, my grill was sitting right there, and I landed right on that grill just like I'm riding a big bull. That's true. If I'd have been that much, if I'd have been this much farther over here, I'd have went right on that fence. And I'm telling you, I'd have been right through my gut. My knee made a dent in that grill. It's still in there today. And uh, I, I jumped off. I said, okay, stupid. Now you keep that. The, it slipped. It went like that. The bottom of it slipped out. And that thing went all the way down. I can show you the mark on the side of my house. It went all the way down through there. And I said, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And my knee was a little bit bruised. And I limped around there for a few minutes. And I said, oh, boy. Uh, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. And ever since then, I still do that, but I'm a little bit more careful uh, about where I put the, you don't put it on the concrete, you know, uh, where it's slick. I was about there one time putting in a sign. I believe I was on the phone with Brother Derek. Uh, we was planning on something. I don't know if you remember that or I'd even told you. The ladder went out from under me back there and, the, and it went right down on the floor I went. And I, and you know what? Uh, that that that's, that's a scary thing. There have been people hurt bad. There have been people come off buildings and killed uh, because the ladder was not safe. But I'm telling you this morning, that'll never happen with the Lord Jesus Christ. He is a safe 
ladder, people. You don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about him holding you up. Are you listening? You say, well, Brother Danny, I'm not, I ain't much of a Christian. I ain't neither. But, buddy, we've got a ladder underneath us that will never, ever fail. Ladies and gentlemen, it's safe. It's safe. It's safe. You, might, you can go to hell trusting the church membership. You can go to hell trying to be a good person. You can go to hell trying to be moral. But you cannot go to hell trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a safe ladder. You trust in the Lord Jesus this morning? You're going, you're going. You're safe, you're safe, you are safe. They said one time um, years ago, uh, there was a bunch of men shipwrecked, sailors, out on the coast of Scotland. And they was on this uh, ship and they, and they would have been crushed uh, to death. But all of a sudden, somebody said during the waves and the broken vessel, uh, a ladder was hanging down. And they said, there's a way out. There's a way out. The ship is tossed. The ship's gonna be destroyed. And they grabbed on it, went off that ladder and escaped. Another went down that ladder and escaped. Another went down that ladder and escaped. And I say unto you this morning, ladies and gentlemen, this whole world is tossed to and fro. It's getting worse every day. Drugs, uh, problems, wars, rumors of wars, politics, religion. It's coming apart at the seam. This whole world's bad, but I thank God there's a way out of here. I'm glad there's a way of escape and his name is Jesus Christ and it's a safe ladder. Number two, Jesus Christ is a strong ladder. He's a strong ladder, amen. Bible said angels were descending on it. I don't know how much an angel weighs, uh, uh, but there's a bunch of them going up and down. You say, I know how much my angel weighs. Well, maybe you do. Uh, but uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if Jesus, he, he, held, up, he held him up, brother. Uh, we got it backwards nowadays. A lot of people write books and say, angels are gonna take care of us, angels are gonna take care of us, and I, I believe in guardian angels and all that kind of stuff. But listen, brother, Jesus wasn't descending up and down on the angels. The angels descended up and down on him. He's, that's a strong one right there. That's a strong one. Thank God for angels. I'm thanking God for angels. I really do. But that ain't who's, who I'm dependent on taking me to heaven. I ain't depending on no angel. I'm depending on the one that's strong enough to get me there. Amen. Uh, I've, I've seen a lot of men work when we was working on this building. I, I've seen them. A lot of these guys are pretty smart, these, these contracts, because they failed before. And I've seen them take a ladder and, and put it up against the side of a house where they're working, and they'll actually take a, uh, uh, reinforce it a little bit, nail a two before to the house and, nail it so the ladder can't fall back or, or reinforce one of the steps. And they say, I, I don't know, if you're carrying a bucket of concrete or a thing of shingles up a ladder, you know, that's your weight plus the weight of them uh, pack of shingles, ever how much that weighs. And sometimes you're carrying a bucket of concrete up a ladder, it's a little old cheap, sorry, uh, ladder thing will bend or possibly even break. I have seen some guys, pretty big guys, get on some ladders. And boy, I looked at the step like, oh, you better, you better step on the side there, brother. Uh, you, know, but, uh, you know what? Uh, you, you, have, you worry about them, and sometimes it's happened. Man, take a step like that, take a bucket of, bucket of paint, step up about that time, step up about that time, pow, break with him like that right there. But I'm telling you this morning, I put my trust in the Lord Jesus a long time ago. When I was 18 years old, I trusted him. And I never have to worry about it going, pop, he dropped me. Pop, he let me go. He couldn't hold me up. Ladies and gentlemen, if we fail, it ain't the Lord's fault. He can hold you up. I said he can hold you up. Underneath are the everlasting arms. In Deuteronomy 33 and verse 27, uh, he said underneath are the everlasting arms. That's my verse I claim when I get on an airplane. Every time I get on an airplane, I think of that verse. It says, underneath are the everlasting arms. Right, Lord? Okay, you got your arms underneath this thing, right? You're, you're gonna fly me to wherever I'm going. I think about that verse. I'm telling you, he'll hold to my hand as over death river I go. And safe. I shall be, my anchor holds, you can't break him. That's why the old song says, how firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more could he do? I, I tell you, when he, when he died, you know what he said? It is finished. The ladder is strong enough to hold you up. You 
You say, Brother Danny, I've failed the Lord so many times and I've got out and I've backslid and I've messed up and I've ruined my testimony and I've done other things. I'm telling you, he's strong enough to hold you up. Stand back up and get back on fire for God like you need to be. Number one, Jesus is a safe ladder. Number two, Jesus is a strong ladder. You know, this whole world, bad shape. I, I'm not, I'm never, never quit getting amazed at how wicked the world got with all their scientific advancements and these great laws we're passing and everybody being tolerant, people getting meaner and meaner and meaner and meaner. I heard this week, I heard this week of a man, one woman got drunk. She had a four-month-old baby, Lillard and Frankster. Is that right, Frankster? Amen, brother. Mean face. Do the mean face. Ooh, there's a mean face. Uh, that's a mean woman. That's a mean man. That's a mean man. Uh, anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, four-month-old. Four months old. He was six or seven when we got him, I think. So there's a lot littler than him. And her and the guy went off and got drunk. And they stayed, they left a four-month-old baby in the apartment. Laying there. When they found it, on filth, gurgling, stomach bloated out, hadn't moved, no diaper change, and four days. And then they, the, the court, the, the DSS took it, and then when they come to the court, uh, the mama's in there screaming, please don't take my baby. Please don't take my baby. But, and you know, that's, that's the weird mess that we're in. They say, I love my kids. I love my kids. I love my kids. And then run off and leave them for four days? Y'all, y'all know, you know what I'm talking about? This, this people's getting wicked, more wicked. You know what that is? That's without natural affection. That's without natural affection. Listen, everybody sinners, but when a mother walks off and leaves her own child uh, for days, uh, that ain't natural, brother. That's demonic. That's some kind of wickedness beyond just being mean. And brother, people, uh, I, I heard of a, of a man, uh, another woman who was selling her three-year-old daughter, selling her three-year-old daughter and sold her to men all her life till she was 13 and finally got out of the house. Selling her like a dog or something to, to support her drug habit and all that. And, and that ain't the tip of the iceberg. We don't know. We don't know how bad and wicked this old world is, me and you are living in. I mean, we see everybody, we're out here smiling. You don't go down into the cracks and the corners and the holler and see what goes on. And, in the trailer parks or in the big shot house uptown of the wickedness. There ain't no difference in them and them down there. Some people said, uh, a man one time, he said, uh, you see that man laying down there in the ditch? He's gone to the dogs. See that rich man up there in the big house? He's gone to the devil. Same thing. Same exact thing. Same as back, exact demons and devils that get them all. But I'm telling you this morning, we ought to thank God and rejoice because there's a way out of this mess. There is a way. Jesus come and made the way. He's all the way from earth all the way to heaven, put your faith and your foot and your trust and your hand into the Lord Jesus Christ. He is strong enough to get you home. Let me say this. Number three, and I'm through. Number one, Jesus is a safe ladder. Number two, Jesus is a strong ladder. Number three, Jesus is a spansive ladder. Span, span. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span. At Calvary, the top of the ladder reached to heaven. Wouldn't have been much. It wouldn't have been much if he had just said the bottom was on earth and the top was up there pretty close to the clouds. That wouldn't have made it, would it? Well, I'm all the way up top of the ladder. Now what? God's still a million miles up yonder. You see, they tried that one time. One time in Genesis chapter 11, Man tried that. They all got together and they said, let's build us a tower that'll reach to heaven. They didn't get too far, did they? Go out there and try to build a tower. They tried it in New York City. They tried it in Tokyo. They tried it in Amsterdam. They tried uh, the tallest building in the world now, I think. Lord, they've, they've done made uh, Empire State Building. It's, it's short now compared to some of them. Um, it, 102 stories and then it had 110 and the Sears Tower was and then, then they made another one then they make another one that sticks up a little further in New York or in somewhere in, 
other parts of the world. So they go, listen, you say, man, they're going to build one all the way to heaven. When you fly with them in airplanes, you can't even see them little things. They ain't that big uh, when you're flying in. That ain't going to make it. That's not a great enough span. All of man's efforts, the Pope, Mother Teresa, Gandhi, all the people say, oh, they lived a holy life. They never owned anything. They gave everything they get, had to the poor. I mean, you mean what's going to happen to them, preacher? They're about that tall. And God's way, 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 way up yonder. The absolute best that a man can do. Looks like the Empire State Building from 30,000 feet. It's not that big at all. I'm telling you, thank God, when a man or a woman or a boy or a girl puts their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, there is a span that reaches all the way from down here, all the way to where God is. Eastern religions will never do it. Humanism will never do it. Social programs will never do it. It will never do it. He'll get you all the way there. I'm going to show you tonight, if not tonight, in the next few weeks, that Christ, having, they have Christian yoga now. Have you heard about that? Christian yoga. That's how ignorant people are nowadays. And, and don't get mad at me if you if you're that ignorant, I mean, it ain't my fault. You need to study what yoga is, people. I'm not against exercising. You know, I believe there ain't nothing wrong with working out. There's nothing wrong with, there's, there's nothing wrong with meditating on the Word of God. But yoga is an Eastern mysticism. That took in the, the, you, don't, you, you know why they do like this? Because when them spirits come out of you, they don't just keep going. They circle around and come back in, circle around and come back in. You don't, you don't have the Holy Spirit doing like this. Give him the 666 sign. Yeah, that ain't the way you get the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's got nothing. Old John Lennon, that poor, pitiful guy. I feel sorry for him, really. What a pitiful, miserable failure in life. He wrote that song. Imagine there, no heaven. I wrote one time with kids at camp. I never did sing it all, but I wrote a song about that. And it's, imagine there's no Beatles. It's easy if you try. No stinking hippies. The world's a whole lot better by and by. Amen. Imagine all the people getting right with God and serving the Lord. You may say that I'm a dreamer. I'm not the only one. I mean, hallelujah, Howard, or two right there. I hope someday you'll join us and we'll go to heaven and be with Jesus. Listen, that poor guy, I feel sorry for him. He was a miserable, wretched flop. John Lennon was. He'd have been better off never to have been born. He said that spirits come in and give him them Beatles songs. So you think that's clean music. It ain't clean. The spirit in that stuff ain't clean, y'all. Even in that old music, the spirit, wrong spirit. Wrong spirit. You say, Lord, no, now he's going to take away our 60s. Well, it's the wrong spirit. That's all I can tell you. Nothing wrong with a romantic man, song between a man and his wife, but that spirit ain't right. Most of that stuff. But anyway, old John said, imagine there's no heaven, no hell below us. Guess what? You can sit there all day long and say, I'm a dreamer. And that ain't going to change one thing. The second John Lennon left this world, he realized that his dream wasn't right. Jesus Christ is an expansive ladder. Not expensive, expansive. Spance. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. The George Washington Bridge in New York City, I don't know if you've ever been sitting in New York City, I, I've seen it, the George Washington Bridge. You know what makes that bridge work? It goes from one side to the other. It don't go halfway and stop. A religion that just makes you feel good about yourself and allows you to feel some kind of peace is no good. You need one that's going to take you from earth to heaven. Jesus got in the boat with them guys one time and he said this. He got in that boat and he said, let's go to the other side. I'm glad he said that. He got in there and said, let's go to the other side. Listen, the night I got saved, I got in the boat with the Lord, and the Lord said, Danny, let's go the other side. 
Buddy, we've hit rocks. We've hit, been through storms. But I'm still in the boat. He still got his hands on me. And I fully expect 100% to arrive safely on the other side one day. And the Lord say, I told you we was going to the other side. And I say, hallelujah, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. He's a ladder that'll get us from he here to heaven. He's a ladder that'll take you from Morgan to glory, brother. Hallelujah. He's expensive. So simple. Today, people trip over it. The average person today still honestly thinks, come on, Miss Desi, still honestly thinks that if you're a good enough person that you might make it to heaven when you die. Nope. The way to, the way to go to heaven is get in him. And if you're in him, rest. Rest in that. Rest in that. Listen, if Jesus Christ can't get me to heaven, I'm sunk, buddy. I've sinned too much, and you have too. You might as well just rest in him. He's a safe ladder. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Every head bowed and every eye closed. I know on a bad, old, icy, cold morning like this, most people couldn't even get their cars out of the driveway, that all you folks here probably are saved, and you're here because you want to be. I, I, I'm assuming that's true. But maybe there's someone here this morning. So the preacher... I, I, need to, I need to make a step for God. I need to get my life right. I need to, I need to get saved. Some's coming already. If you want to come and pray, we're not going to sing. We're just going to pray for a few minutes this morning. Just slip right out of your seat and come. Get down here on your knees. Let's pray. We run one bus this morning. Got bus kids in the altar. Isn't that something? Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Isn't that a blessing? Maybe y'all just get out of your seat. Come and pray with us this morning. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to let you go. Anybody else? Anybody else? Right quick. Anybody else? Right quick. You let God speak to your heart. We do that? We do that? We do that? Amen. 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 He's a ladder, friend. He's the way out of here. I'm trusting him to get me out of here and get me the other side. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground. Seek and sand. Trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Let him be your best friend. Talk to him every day. Learn more about him every day. Be more like him every day. Trust his life and death and burial and resurrection to get you to heaven. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for all you've done for us. I thank you, Lord, for the promise in your word that you're going to take us to the other side. I'm so thankful this morning, Lord, that you're the way. You are the truth, not you plus church membership. Not you plus our good works, but you and you alone, hallelujah, are the way. I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you, Lord, and I know I can't fail. Lord of God, I pray, Lord, that you bless every single person here this morning. Give every one of them the complete assurance that they need to know where they're going when they leave this world. We'll thank you and praise you for what you do. And we do love you this morning, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Amen.